So, Owen, uh, government says they've ended the eviction ban and that's their position, no matter what, no matter how many other families or workers become homeless. Yeah, this is, I have to say, one of those decisions that even I'm surprised at. Um, last year, thousands of eviction notices were given. Uh, they were given to single people, to couples, to families with children, uh, and increasingly to pensioners. Um, uh, and while the ban on evictions over the winter uh, uh, didn't reduce homelessness, it stopped a lot of people from entering emergency accommodation or rough sleeping. The ban now ends, thanks to the government, um, at, the end, at the end of this month. Yeah. Um, and hundreds, if not thousands, of eviction notices will fall due. That means on that day, people will have to leave their properties and pre present for emergency accommodation. We've been talking to homeless service providers, public and voluntary, and they're telling us in many counties there is no emergency accommodation. So where are people going to go? Um, Pierre Stardy asked the Taoiseach and the, the Taunish to that very question, and he simply couldn't answer it. Yeah, And that is the question. So. Where do you go if your notice to quit falls due, if you're, if you're evicted? Where, where do you go? What, what has the government done to actually make provision for those families who know it's, a, they're like, it's like a ticking clock now? It's a countdown for them. What, what, what provision has been made for them? Well, normally, uh, if somebody has a notice to quit and on the day they have to be out, they don't have anywhere to go, they present to the local authority for emergency accommodation. We know from talking to emergency accommodation providers that given the scale of notices that are going to fall due in April and then May and then June, mm -hmm. emergency accommodation is going to be full very, very quickly. So the problem is, is that puts the renter in a very difficult position. They either sleep rough or they overhold, neither of which uh, they want to do. And of course, no parent with children is going to have their children out sleeping rough. Mm. So the reality of the government decision is enormous stress for these people. Um, uh, the likelihood that very large numbers of people are going to be forced to overhold because they have no other choice. Then landlords uh, taking cases to the Residential Tenancies Board uh, and over April, May and June, we begin to see levels not just of, of uh, homelessness, but rough sleeping. And in the case of families with children who under Tuesday rules, if there's nowhere for them to go, have to be referred to a Garda station for a safe place to sleep, being referred to Garda stations. And we've been there before, haven't we? I mean, there have been cases before where desperate families have ended up in, in Garda stations. So the, the summary of this is the government has removed this protection from all renters, those renters who now face a, a notice to quit coming due, who, who face an eviction. There's been no plan. Sure there hasn't. I mean, this for me is the most astonishing thing. To make such a decision with such consequences for workers and families for children and to have no plan at all. And what's really it's astonishing, isn't it? What's really clear, both from Leo Varadkar, Michael Martin, and Dara O'Brien, all this week in the responses to yourself, to Pierre Starty, uh, and myself, is that they simply have no contingency plan in place for April, May, and June. I, I pressed Dara O'Brien on this in in uh, oral questions today repeatedly, and he has no plan. No. Pierce pressed Michael Martin about it, and in fact, he wouldn't even answer. He just tried to distract. Um, and the difficulty is, is that um, uh, if we have large numbers of people who present as homeless and have nowhere to go, they will end up on the streets, they will end up in cars, they will end up in guard stations. And we're talking about a very broad range of people here. We're talking about people with good jobs, we're talking about pensioners or people close to retirement. Uh, you know, we're talking about families with children. Like, how are you meant to cope being in a guard station with your, your exactly. children? It's, it's even, unimaginable. And even if it doesn't come to that um, you know, the idea that you would be back in your, you know, your mother's box room or the idea that you would be sofa surfing, um, you know, moving from one place to the other. And you and I both know of cases of people at work, you know, doing a day's work and with children. And that's their that's their experience. So it, it's just unbelievable that the government has made this decision. There's what, three quarters of a million renters so even for those who don't have a notice to quit, who aren't now facing uh, eviction, I mean, this is a big change for every renter, isn't it? I mean, it, it's just, to me, it's astonishing. You're paying massive rent, lots of people paying rent that is eye-watering, and such, a, such low uh, availability, such low supply, and the government goes and, and does this. It, it's just... For me, and we've talked a lot about their failures in housing, but this is just 
an unbelievable failure, in my view, on their on their part. Like I think what's become really clear this week is government has literally thrown the towel in with renters. They've completely abandoned them. And like just think about that for a moment. Twenty percent of all households in the state, a quarter, twenty five percent of all households in Dublin, uh, three quarters of a million people, men, women, and children, live in the private rental sector. And we've known since 2017, seven years straight, single property landlords, because of high house prices, are leaving the market. So this hasn't come all of a sudden. This has been coming year on year. And at the same time, government has missed every single one of its social and its affordable rental and affordable purchase targets. Those targets were too low in the first place, but they've missed all of those. So we've seen this coming. I mean, many of us have been raising this with both Owen Murphy when he was minister uh, and now uh, with uh, uh, Dara O'Brien. And I think what it's done to all renters is it has not only reinforced, but it's really kind of made clear to them this, this depth of insecurity that mm. renting is not a secure tenure. Yeah. I'm talking to people, again, couples in good jobs, they've been renting 10 years in the same place, but their landlord's approaching pension age, was always going to sell you know, for that pension pot lump sum, uh, or their landlord was stuck in negative equity, never wanted to be a landlord, but couldn't sell until positive equity was back. And those people have nowhere to go. And for example, even if they were able to get another rental, rents have gone up so much for new rentals. Average new rents in Dublin now, two and a half thousand. In some parts of Dublin, three thousand for modest family homes. So what's going to happen? Some of those people, you're right, will move back in with family and friends. Some of them will end up in house shares in their 30s and 40s, right? Paying sky high rents. But also we know that a lot of people who don't want to present for emergency accommodation enter into arrangements with family and friends, but they eventually break down and those people then end up presenting uh, for emergency accommodation. It's just such such an impossible position for anybody to, to, to be in. And I suppose one of the questions that we're asked regularly is, right, okay, so what's the answer to this? I mean, one of the answers is don't remove the eviction ban. That's, that's clearly not part of the solution. In fact, it's going to potentially drive the problem more deeply. But just talk a little bit, mm-hmm. Owen, around the blocks of, of the answer to this. Because let's remember, most people who are in private rental don't really want to be there. They would hope to build up their deposit, to buy a home, to, you know. So what, what is the answer? It is supply. We know this. It's build houses. So the first thing is, is the ban on evictions in itself isn't a solution. Um, For sure. The only reason it's necessary is because of the failures of government. That's the first thing. And it has to be extended to the end of the year. And what that does is it gives government breathing space. Now, when we asked government uh, at the latter end of last year to introduce the ban, we said, if you introduce the ban, there's a number of things you have to do. Government didn't do them, and now we're back uh, to square one. So what are those things? So the first thing is local authorities currently can buy private rental properties at market value, where you have a tenant in situ in receipt of happen rise with an eviction notice. They've bought a tiny number since that scheme was reopened last year because Darrell O'Brien hasn't designed it right. That scheme needs to be amended and expanded. There's a lot of renters out there who aren't eligible for HAP and RAS. They're not social housing uh, applicants, but they would be eligible for long-term affordable cost rental. Darrell O'Brien needs to extend what we call the tenant in situ scheme for local authorities to purchase to approved housing bodies. And they could also purchase uh, and allow people to remain as renters. There's a development in Dublin 8, Tatney House, over 30 families. Most of those are working families above the threshold for social housing. Uh, what we need to happen there is Dara O'Brien to say, yes, we'll provide funding for an approved housing body to buy it, and then the cost renters become long-term affordable renters. The rent might even go down. And at the same time, Dara O'Brien uh, and the government need to use the kind of emergency powers they used during COVID, emergency planning powers and emergency procurement powers, combined with uh, an approach to vacant and derelict properties, and what we call new building technologies, to say, okay, in those nine months, could we deliver between the tenant in situ for social rental and affordable rental and emergency planning procurement powers with vacant derelicts and new building technologies, a couple of thousand extra social and affordable homes? Uh, That would be a huge task, but I think if government went at it with the same kind of coordination and urgency that they did with COVID, you could achieve that. That would get lots and lots of people out of emergency accommodation, ease the pressure. Meanwhile, Dara Bryan's not meeting his regular social affordable housing targets either. So we need to reduce the level of bureaucracy and increase the funding to local authorities, 
to, in the bigger picture, expand social affordable housing. So there's an emergency package of measures that are required now. I wrote to Darrell O'Brien in October setting all of this out. He ignored my advice. I wrote to him again on Monday of this week setting it out in even more detail. He ignored our advice. And now we're in a situation where right across the country, renters, whether they have that notice or not, are fearful of the future because they do not have a secure roof over their head and this government is not offering them anything uh, by way of real solutions. You know, I mean, one of the dangers in all of this is that people start to think this is just impossible. Nobody can sort this out. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. But you know what? It's now very clear to me uh, this week, watching the behaviour of government, the lack of planning, lack of thought as well. It's very clear to me that those who caused the housing crisis, Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil, are not capable of solving the housing crisis. We've evidence of that, but that is not to say that it can, it can be solved. And we have, what, two weeks left now before the uh, eviction ban will be lifted. I know that Raise the Roof is going to be very active and we're asking all of you to lobby, lobby your TDs, lobby your councillors, use every voice that you have just to make the case for just common sense and, and a bit of common decency uh, as well. This eviction ban is not the answer. Nobody has claimed that it is, but certainly it is necessary now because the housing emergency is so acute and government needs to buy time and up its game and actually deliver affordable homes, uh, get to grips with the derelict building, all of the things that Owen has set out. But we're asking people, don't lose hope. Uh, this can be sorted out, but please get active. They, they plan to lift the eviction ban at the end of March. We plan to do everything that we can to stop that happening uh, and we need your help in that.